Coming up on Hashtag That, Halloween is right around the corner and we're celebrating. Along with the students of Quinnipiac, we have the top events Bobcats will be attending this weekend. And we break down ways to get the perfect Halloween costume for cheap. Plus, is candy corn good or gross? All this and more coming up on this week's Hashtag That. Welcome to Hashtag That Halloween Edition. I'm Kaylin Blonstein. And I'm Alexa Farrell. Let's get started. Halloween is the spookiest time of the year. Ghost and ghouls are headed into town as Quinnipiac students are headed out. So what is there to do around campus and around town? Here are the best places to head once you're all dressed up. Face your fears Thursday night at Yale Peabody Museum of Natural History in New Haven. From 7 to 10 p.m., there will be a haunted, call, haunted hall crawl and costume ball. The ball is for those 18 and older. Admission is $15 for students. On Friday night, Hamden Hotspot Anchies is hosting the annual Halloween party. Doors open at 9 p.m. with a $5 cover charge. They're giving out cash prizes for best costumes. And on Saturday night, you can get froggy Halloween style. Halloween will be green at Toad's Place in New Haven. There'll be a DJ, a costume contest, and drink specials for those of age. The night begins at 9.30 p.m. And if Toad's isn't exactly your scene, you can attend a Halloween-themed concert in New Haven by the Yale Symphony Orchestra. Admission is $10, and the concert begins just as the creatures of night awake at 11 p.m. Our very own Kayla Heavey and Paige Meyer went out on the quad to see what Quinnipiac students are planning to do for Halloween weekend. Let's take a look. All right, so what are you being for Halloween this year? I'm going to be a rugby player for Halloween. Uh, we plan to be Egyptians with our two other roommates. Oh, I'm going to be a lawyer. Nice. Yeah. I'm going to be a Batwoman. Uh, I'm going to be an army girl. Oh, yeah. And a SWAT <laughs> team officer. Um, right now, I'm undecided. <laughs> yeah, I don't know yet. Yeah, no. That's all right. Me neither. Uh, I think I'm going as banana. Oh, there you go. Uh, a Hooters girl. Just going to wing it. Yep. I'm being a nerd. I'm dressing up as a Secret Service agent along with my other suite mates, and one of them is being President Barack Obama. Do you have any plans for Halloween? Yeah, I'm going up to Syracuse. Staying on campus? I think I might be going to a party <laughs> on campus and then Toad's on top of it. Oh, I may go to Toad's. Probably going to Toad. Same. Same. <laughs> uh, I think I'm just going to go out and hang out with my friends, you know, go on the Halloween night at Quinnipiac. Um, my friend's having a Halloween party back at home. So. Oh, so you're going home for Halloween? Yeah, I'll be going home. Oh, okay. What about you? I'm just going to see what's happening on campus. We don't have plans yet, but I'm sure we'll be going out somewhere. And what's your favorite candy? Snickers. Reese's. I like Kit Kat. Right. Uh, just candy all the time. <laughs> and what's your favorite fall snack? Uh, mine probably is apple pie. I'd have to agree. <laughs> oh, apple crisp, definitely. Apple, candy? apple crisp, definitely. Apple. I love apple crisp. I like apple cider. Apple cider? <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. I like candy apples. <laughs> there you go. I like apple cider. It's apple really cider? Nice, yeah. nice, yeah. I like pumpkin pie. Probably a hot chocolate or caramel apples. Mm, apple cider. Apple crisp. Oh, those so. little sugar cookies with the pumpkins on. Quinnipiac students volunteered at the Trunk or Treating event in Wallingford this past weekend. The event was hosted by ARC, which is a nonprofit to help those with disabilities. Children went around to about 30 different decorated car trunks and collected candy. There was music, food, and pumpkin painting. Our very own Chris Lynn Freed even volunteered at the event. Kyle Mega helped Quidditch on the quad this past weekend. Quidditch is a popular game from the Harry Potter series. For us muggles who don't have flying broomsticks, it is a combination of rugby, dodgeball, and tag. Kyle also had Harry Potter themed treats at their fundraiser like chocolate frogs and golden snitches. All of the money raised from the event went to their philanthropy, the Make-A-Wish Foundation. The men's soccer team had its last home game of the season this Saturday, and they were all, and they were all about the fans. They gave out free pizza and t-shirts and hot cocoa, sold sandwiches for two bucks. The men tied the game against Iona, 0-0. Everybody wants that perfect Halloween costume, but the cost of looking great can really add up. Sarah DeGamo took us through some cute Halloween costumes for those of us on a budget. Hey, my name is Sarah DiGiamo and I will be doing college couture. Okay, so for our first costume we have just a basic devil. Um, I think this is really easy because you could just get like a red shirt and 
the really the only thing you have to buy is the horns. And I really like that it just like I like that it's easy and like all you have to buy is that and it's just easy to get. And for the next one, this one is kind of just a candy corn witch. Um, this one's probably more on the expensive side because obviously you have to like buy that. You can't really make it yourself. But I do like the stockings. And although I do think this might be a little risky, but I think these are cute. And I like that she paired it with the black heels. And I also think the hat's really cute also. But... Other than being expensive, I think it's a cute costume. Um, next is a Wonder Woman costume. I think this is also really cute. I think this would be cute if you did like a group thing and you could do just the different superheroes. Um, I think you could do it yourself if you bought like blue shorts and a red top and then maybe like the gold belt. And then really all you would have to buy is this and this. I think it's, it would just be a cute group idea if you wanted to do that. Okay. Then this is kind of just a maid costume. Um, again, I like that they have the tights here. And I like, you could kind of do this yourself if you want to, if you want to buy like a black skirt and kind of just a corset top like that. And all you'd really have to buy is the duster and the head piece over there, but I think this would also be cute as a group costume. Okay. And then this, I think, obviously, you'd probably have to buy, like, the accessories, like the handcuffs and the hat and sunglasses, but other than that, I think you could probably just put this together as a do-it-yourself and kind of just buy a black dress or, like, a black skirt, and then I like that they paired it with the black boots. So I think that could be a really easy costume that's inexpensive, which would be good. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Coming up after the break, see how one Quinnipiac student is helping children going through chemotherapy. And Alexa and I will debate some Halloween topics that you don't want to miss. Stay with us. Welcome to A Sheer Sensation, North Haven's premier cosmetology service, located at 140 Washington Avenue, minutes from Hamden. We offer an array of services, from basic cuts and colors to lash extensions and formaldehyde free keratin treatments. We also provide hair chalk and styling for men. When you spend $60, your cue card will get you 10% off. Call us at 203-239-6477 to make your next appointment at A Sheer Sensation. Welcome to Joya Spa and Salon in Hamden. Whether you want a new look or the perfect wedding day hair, come to us for complete hair and nail care, cuts, styles, updos, extensions, and beautiful dimensional hair color, as well as manis and pedis, acrylics, gels, and shellac. Treat yourself to a facial, a peel, or microdermabrasion. Relax with a variety of massage techniques, including Swedish and hot stone massage. Joya Spa and Salon. Call today. Love Your Melon is a new organization on campus. I sat down with Haley Abbott to learn more. Today we have a very special guest on Hashtag That. I have Haley Abbott with me and she is the Vice Captain 
of the Love Your Melon Campus Crew here at Quinnipiac University. Hi. Hi, Ailey. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. So can you tell us a little bit about Love Your Melon? So Love Your Melon is a company and apparel brand and organization that's on a mission to bring comfort to families with children with cancer. So it's run by 2,500 students across the country at around 250 colleges who are just here to spread the mission and sell the products. What products do you sell? So we have beanies, cuffed hats, caps, long sleeve t-shirts, tank tops, bracelets, headbands, really anything you can think of. That's awesome. And where does the money from the products go? So the money from the products goes 50% to the Love Your Melon Foundation and 50% to their partnership with Cure Search, which is finding a cure for cancer, and um, the Pinky Swear Foundation, which brings comfort to the families and brings the kids on trips and missions anywhere they could possibly imagine. Awesome. So how did you get involved here at Quinnipiac with Love Your Melon? So my roommate's sister actually started the crew at Providence College and brought the idea to us. And there was six of us who started in March who just really loved this foundation and really loved what it stood for. So from there, we worked and we ended up refounding our crew. And now there's 20 of us in our campus crew and a list of volunteers of about 15, I think. That's awesome. What do you guys get to do with Love Your Melon? So for each product sold, a crew gets one credit. So once we reach a certain amount of credits, there's different things we can do. So we just reached the amount of credits that we can go to a house visit. And so there's five of us that c can go to a house and bring five hats to the family and just play with the kid the whole day. And eventually there'll be enough credits that we can go to a hospital and bring hats to children all throughout the pediatric cancer floor. Wow, that's really awesome. Yeah. So what does Love Your Melon mean to you? Love Your Melon is just, there's so many things that it means to me. I'm doing something bigger than myself, bigger than the school. It's all of these students working together to do what we can for this foundation and what we can for these families. It's, it sounds like a wonderful cause. So thank you so much, Haley. Check out Love Your Melon. They have a Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Yes. And back to you guys at the desk. Hey guys, I'm Liv Dufo, here to moderate our Halloween theme discussion. Alexa and Kaylin will each have 30 seconds to get their views across for each topic. Now let's get started. This year, fall hasn't been quite the same on the Quinnipiac campus. Why, you might ask? The farmer's, farmer's market is gone. In previous years throughout the fall season, Quinnipiac would host a weekly farmer's market on the Bobcat Lawn. Trinkets, smoothies, and more would be sold, and the much-adored food trucks would also be in attendance. However, this year, there has been no farmer's market, and the food trucks are a rare occasion. I'm personally very bitter about the lack of the farmer's market this year. Kaylin and Alexa, what do you guys think? Dis or miss the farmer's market? You guys each have 30 seconds, remember, so whoever's going first, go ahead. So I thought the farmer's market was such a good way to have everyone come out to the quad and be friendly with each other. There was always different food trucks like the grilled cheese truck that everybody loved. The line was around the quad. And it had local goods too, so it was a good way to get Hamden and Quinnipiac to be on good terms. Um, there was sweets like cannolis that we couldn't get in the calf, which I thought was really good. And it wasn't really that expensive, so you could just use your Q-Cash and then it was a nice alternative to going to the calf. Perfect. Alexa, what's your say? Okay, so I disagree. I am happy to see that the food trucks are gone. Goodbye. First of all, the temptation is unreal. When I see the cupcake truck, I want it. I want like 10,000 cupcakes. So the fact that it's gone helps my waistline beyond belief, okay? <laughs> Second of all, my mom hates it. She hates it. My Q-Cash goes straight to the food trucks. So it's saving my mom money. It's saving me money because the only food that's there is cupcakes and cannolis and carbs because there's french fries and there's grilled cheese and there's everything. And me and my friends can just go and go to the cafe and get a nice salad and talk together. All right, salad girl, your time is up. It's my Clearly, we, we love healthy options over here on hashtag that. Where's but, uh, the carrots? Kaylin, I agree with you on this one. Yeah. Debate. I say bring back cupcakes. No. Yeah, same. Let's get Cupcake truck topic. or bust. <laughs> it's the age old Halloween debate. Candy corn, deliciously sweet or disgustingly sugary? Candy corn was created in the 1880s by George Renninger and it was originally called chicken feed. Today, it is estimated that about 90 billion pounds of candy corn is sold annually. 
Plus, this candy isn't just for the Halloween season anymore. Candy corn is sold in all different colors for different holidays, such as Christmas, Valentine's Day, and Easter. So, Kaylin and Alexa, fans or foes of candy corn? Okay, I'm gonna oh, wait, start. Oh, I this need one. to start. Okay, ready? Go ahead. Okay. Candy corn. <laughs> it is. When you think of Halloween, you think of candy corn. It's the first thing that comes to mind. The orange, the yellow, and the white. It's just the colors of Halloween. Second of all, it's healthy. There's 28 grams. I'm on my healthy kick today. <laughs> 28 grams of sugar and 140 calories in it. It's like the best candy you could have. Sweet and healthy. Love it. It's traditional. A hundred year old recipe. And there's billions sold. So I'm not the only one that loves my candy corn. Too good. Kaylin, what's your say? No. Candy corn is literally made out of wax, sugar, corn syrup, and water. You're eating wax. That's disgusting. Not to mention the fact that it tastes atrocious. It's the nastiest thing. And I understand it's Halloween-y, but you're not supposed to be eating that kind of candy. If you want to, like, watch your waistline, you should eat something that's good. Sorry. It's healthy. Uh, all right, you guys. I mean, it's I a zero out of ten for me. Wow. Wow. You guys have very strong opinions today. I'm liking this. It's like an eight out of ten, okay? No, it's eight good. out of ten. I'm two like, out of ten if it's a good day. It reminds me of my grandma's house. All right, you two, we're going <laughs> to the next topic. This is getting weird. <laughs> okay, it's tradition to dress up on Halloween, but Quinnipiac is encouraging students to consider the impact that costumes have on others in the community. This year, the university is supporting the Wear a Culture, Not a Costume campaign. Poster will, posters will be displayed around the campus to discourage students from choosing offensive costumes this Halloween. The university wants students to enjoy themselves this weekend, but be very mindful of our diverse community. Kaylin and Alexa, what do you think of this campaign? Okay, I think that we both agree a little bit on this one, but I think that sometimes um, I have to agree with the campaign. I know personally I compete in the Miss America system, and I get offended when somebody is like, oh, I want to be Miss America for Halloween. World peace, world peace. Like, I am so much more than some girl that stands up and on stage and is like, I want world peace. Thank you. And, it, you know, so much more than a pretty face. So I understand someone that thinks that they are more than just what their culture looks like and enjoys and loves the beauty behind their culture and thinks that it should be more than one festive costume. Kaylin, what do you think? I mean, I agree with you, but I think there's a very fine line between what is okay and what's not. For example, if you wanted to dress up as a Native American versus Pocahontas, I feel like it's okay to be Pocahontas but not Native American. So I think the I think it has good intentions, but I think there's still things that they should maybe clarify within the campaign. On Monday, <laughs> award-winning television director Linda Mendoza came to campus to conduct a workshop for communication students. The all-day workshops concluded with Mendoza performing her one-woman show, Cursed, My Road to Hollywood in the Buckman Theater. Our own Kelly Novak sat down with Mendoza and spoke to students about their experience with her. Award-winning television director Linda Mendoza has collaborated with many well-known actors. I have worked with Tina, I have worked with Andy, I've worked with Will Ferrell, America Ferrara, Lawrence Fishburne, Richard Dreyfuss, Chris Rock. But being on a first-name basis with Tina Fey, Andy Samberg, and other members of Hollywood's elite wasn't her intention. I never planned on being in the television industry. I mean, I literally fell into it. A sociology major from Detroit, Mendoza was given the chance to work for a record company at its Los Angeles location in her third year of college. But record sales didn't thrive for long. The record business, as we all know, started to really take a major tumble in the um, early 80s. And um, my store started to close and you know, we were closing stores all over. Desperate for income, Mendoza used her connections to secure her very first job in television. I had a very dear friend from Detroit who had another friend, it's all about who you know, um, who said, hey, they're looking for pages uh, at Metro Media Channel 11. You know, I've, I'm sure I could get you in. And I had no idea what that meant, but Lord knows I needed a job. And so I went and I got hired um, working as a page like Kenneth from 30 Rock, if anybody knows that. After her brief stint at Metro Media, Mendoza was put into contact with a commercial director and worked as his production assistant. This helped her realize she wanted to continue on this career path. That's really, I would say, when my interest peaked in television. You can watch the full piece on Mendoza at Q30Television.com.
Coming up, Sesame Street is adding a character to their show to help kids learn about autism. Neliana Ferraro has that story and more in this week's entertainment news update after the break. We'll be right back. For debate and analysis of your favorite Quinnipiac sports. So attacking and pressing. I mean, right, and it's not and what they're doing isn't working. But unfortunately, they couldn't finish the Colgate game. So I think definitely those are the keys that the Bobcats need to watch. Had guys that can take the ball in the in, in the latter stages of the second half. I think those even with limited in the minutes. Mac, in the Mac, they play the run and gun style. Q30s and QBSN's Bobcat breakdown brings all that to you and more. Live every Monday night at 8:30. Tune in to see analysis of your Bobcats from the week before. Every sport from every season, it's all right here on Bobcat Breakdown. Welcome to Joya Spa and Salon in Hamden. Whether you want a new look or the perfect wedding day hair, come to us for complete hair and nail care, cuts, styles, updos, extensions, and beautiful dimensional hair color, as well as manis and pedis, acrylics, gels, and shellac. Treat yourself to a facial, a peel, or microdermabrasion. Relax with a variety of massage techniques, including Swedish and hot stone massage. Joya Spa and Salon. Call today. One of the best parts of the weeks leading up to Halloween is watching the Halloween Town movies on Disney Channel. In the three-part movie series, a teenage girl named Marnie Cromwell learns she is a witch. She must save her town from peril while she's trying to figure out how to use her powers. Kimberly J. Brown, the actress who played Marnie in the movies, announced earlier this month that she would be returning to St. Helens, Oregon, where the movies were filmed. Since 1998, there has been an annual festival there to honor the movies. This year, Brown lit the giant jack-o'-lantern at the festival. And could there be a second Super Troopers movie? Neliana Ferraro has your ENU. Thanks, guys. I'm Neliana Ferraro here to give you the latest in entertainment news. Music fans all over the world tweeted with hashtag MTVEMA during the MTV European Music Awards. This year's awards show was held in Milan. People were able to vote for their favorite artists online, picking from categories like Best Look, Best Live, and Best Electronic. Some of the highlights? Justin Bieber won Best Male for the sixth year in a row, and Lana Del Rey won Best Alternative. A rumor has been circulating sending Quabbing Re Reservoir to Facebook's trending list. Actor Kevin Heffernan tweeted a picture of himself near the Massachusetts Reservoir. He's starring in Super Troopers 2, which made people wonder whether parts of the movie were being filmed there. A park ranger confirmed the area has been closed for movie filming, but wouldn't say which movie was actually being filmed. The original Super Troopers came out in 2001 and became a cult classic. And one of your favorite childhood TV shows is getting a new character. Abby Kadabi will be joining Sesame Street as its first autistic member. Kadabi will help kids understand how autism works and how to accept people with this type of uh, disorder. She has her own digital storybook called We're Amazing 123. But Kadabi isn't Sesame Street's first different character. A South African version of the show includes Cammie, who is HIV positive. That's all I have for you guys for this week's ENU. Back to you guys. Thanks, Neliana. Now we have Laura Levenberg here to update us on this week's trending topics in Twitter, in the Twitter world. Laura? Hey guys, I'm Laura Levenberg here to explain some hashtag trending on Twitter that should be on your radar. Hashtag five days to focus. Ariana Grande's new single, Focus, will be released Friday, October 30th. This past Sunday, Grande posted a 16-second clip of her mouthing the words to her new song on Instagram and Twitter to pump up her fans. 
has increased the buzz about the single and now fans hardly can wait to hear the highly anticipated track. Hashtag 5 Age Appreciation Day. This hashtag was in support of the American girl group Fifth Harmony. The band was formed on the second season of The X Factor USA in July 2012. The fans tweeted to Fifth Harmony with the, this hashtag and thanked them for the music and gave all the reason they love supporting the group. Hashtag Creed. This hashtag is for Creed, an American sports drama that is coming out on Thanksgiving weekend. This spin-off of the Rocky film series is about a young man named Adonis Johnson Creed who traveled to Philadelphia, meets Rocky, and asks a legendary boxer to train him. Creed stars Michael B. Jordan and Sylvester Stallone. Hashtag Be Kind Online on October 22nd. It was National Be Kind Online Day. This day was to bring awareness to cyberbullying and social isolation by prom promoting ways to make the internet a friendly place. It is a technology campaign for kids sponsored by the I Keep Safe and Beyond Difference organization. Internet users took the pledge to stay kind not only on October 22nd, but every day of the year. Remember to think before you post and be kind online. That's it for this week's trending topics. I'm Lara Levenberg. Back to you guys. With Halloween only a few days away, everybody has been talking about their favorite candies. Hashtag that talks about it after the break. Welcome to A Sheer Sensation, North Haven's premier cosmetology service, located at 140 Washington Avenue, minutes from Hamden. We offer an array of services, from basic cuts and colors, to lash extensions, and formaldehyde free keratin treatments. We also provide hair chalk and styling for men. When you spend $60, your cue card will get you 10% off. Call us at 203-239-6477 to make your next appointment at A Sheer Sensation. Welcome to Joya Spa and Salon in Hamden. Whether you want a new look or the perfect wedding day hair, come to us for complete hair and nail care, cuts, styles, updos, extensions, and beautiful dimensional hair color, as well as manis and pedis, acrylics, gels, and shellac. Treat yourself to a facial, a peel, or microdermabrasion. Relax with a variety of massage techniques, including Swedish and hot stone massage. Joya Spa and Salon. Call today. Welcome to Joya Spa and Salon in Hamden. Whether you want a new look or the perfect wedding day hair, come to us for complete hair and nail care, cuts, styles, updos, extensions, and beautiful dimensional hair color, as well as manis and pedis, acrylics, gels, and shellac. Treat yourself to a facial, a peel, or microdermabrasion. Relax with a variety of massage techniques, including Swedish and hot stone massage. Joya Spa and Salon. Call today. When we think about Halloween, we often think about pumpkins. We think about costumes, but mainly we think about candy. The hashtag that crew came together to share their favorite candy. They look forward to seeing what Halloween, when Halloween rolls around. Hey, hashtag that. Hey, hashtag that. Hi, hashtaggers. Hey, gang. My favorite Halloween candy is Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. And my favorite candy is Twix. My favorite Halloween candy is caramel. Mine is Coffee Crisp. My favorite candies for Halloween are, um, where do I begin? My favorite Halloween candy is Snickers. And my favorite candies are Junior Mints and Reese's Pieces. Um, Sour Patch Watermelons, Almond Joys. It's pronounced Reese's, not Reese's. Gotta set the record straight on that one. Kit Kat Bars, uh, Sour Patch Kids. Kaylin, what's your favorite kind of candy? Reese's Peanut Butter Cups all Not time. bad. Because you're not yourself when you don't have a Snickers. And I think the list could go on forever, but I'll just stop at those four. And you know my favorite kind of candy? Candy Crowley. Goodbye, America. I forgot how corn syrup. I love Reese's Pieces. That's not even how you pronounce it. That is absolutely. There was a man named Reese. I just learned the history behind Reese's Pieces. Reese got some pieces, and it's Reese's Pieces. I feel like it's Reese's Pieces. 
No, re it Reese's doesn't have to be logical. Is pieces a word? No, but that's my favorite candy, so. Reese's Pieces, okay? That's all we have for you this week. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at hashtag ThatQU for all things QU Entertainment. Have a great night and a happy Halloween. We'll see you next week.